All right, we're back with assignment 18, block one, two rabbits for Evolve. There are two rabbits, one in the back, one in the front, as you can see, one is dark black rabbit, one is a white rabbit, and I like rabbits. I just, this is my favorite part of the block when we're starting to paint animals, or rather animal statuettes, because they're not actually animals. But that is one of the things that I had been thinking about ever since I started this program is I look through a lot of what my peers and classmates are doing on in the Facebook group and also their Instagrams and things like that. And some of them have kind of specialized in certain things because they came in with an idea of what they wanted to paint. Some people were already artists and they found the Evolve program and wanted to take it to advance their skills or learn a different medium. Um, whereas I wasn't an artist before I started Evolve, so I wasn't really painting or drawing anything in particular. And I have often thought about what I would like to paint if I had a niche, so to speak. I don't know if you really necessarily need a niche, but a lot of people have them. And so I was thinking, what would I want to be my niche if I could pick one? And I think it maybe will have something to do with animals, because I really do enjoy animals or toys or children. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you see a theme here? But I do like animals, especially small creatures like bunny rabbits, um, birds, dogs, cats. I mean, I guess that's fairly typical. I don't know if there are any particularly exotic or rare animals. Maybe penguins. Penguins and polar bears, perhaps? Um, stuffed animals, maybe, too. One of the assignments that I saw on the Evolve I think it's in the advanced block though. I, we don't touch it within blocks one to four, but in blocks five to eight, I think one of the assignments was to paint a teddy bear with a bottle. And so fingers crossed, I hope if I you know successfully complete blocks one to four, I can sign up for the next four blocks and get to do the teddy bear. But before we get there, <laughs> let's finish what we have in front of us. So starting with these two rabbits, I decided to start with the black rabbit first, not just because we're supposed to because our standard procedure is start with the dark and then move to the lights, but also because the dark rabbit seems easier and it actually really was. Um, but in this case, instead of doing all of the dark shadows and the moderate shadows and then the moderate lights and extreme lights, I decided to focus on rabbit, one rabbit at a time. And that's one of the things that the um, instructors advise because some students a lot of students, I would say, don't do all of the paintings in one shot. I like to do that because it just makes things simpler for me not to have to set things out and clean it up and set it out and clean it up, wash the brushes, etc. I just have to do that cleanup process once. But what that means is I have to plan ahead to make sure that I have a good solid minimum five hours of time to to paint, otherwise I'm going to not be able to do everything in one shot. But anyways, when you aren't able to do everything in one shot, the instructors advise you to paint what they call object to object. So you do, like I did here, do one bunny, and then you can take a break and come back to it the next day and then do the second bunny. And that way you don't have to um, wrestle with dry paint when you're working on gradients and so on and so forth. So I don't know why I decided to do the light before the shadow for this bunny. I should have done the shadow first, but oh well. What's done is done. So um, generally speaking, you do the shadow value first and then you do the lighter value. And I made a mistake on the ears at one point um, on this front bunny. I think I did the shadow wrong. So I had to paint over that later. But the white rabbit is, yeah, see, I made a mistake. So I'm cleaning that up. Um, the white rabbit was harder to do than the black rabbit because it's, um, Maybe because it's lighter colored, so any mistakes that you make are more visible. Whereas like with the dark rabbit, I feel like you can you can kind of, if you make a mistake or go out of the lines a little bit, it's easier to cover up any errors. Whereas with the light rabbit, especially if you're, if you make a mistake with the extreme light, there's nothing lighter than extreme light and darkening things more doesn't help. So you really have to be careful when you lay down your values for the, the white rabbit that you do it correctly and you don't mess up because the only other thing you can do is wait for it to dry. If you make a mistake and you have to lighten something, the only thing you can do is to wait for it to dry and then paint over it with your extreme light, but that's not the best solution. So it's better to be very careful. It's like they say, measure twice and cut once, right? One thing that I've learned in going through the Evolve 
program, painting, is that this is not a mindless process. It really isn't. Making decisions about what value is that, you know, where do the gradients go, how far, how, what shape should the buffer be, those kinds of things, it really takes a lot of thinking and planning ahead and um, keeping a lot of things in your mind simultaneously not to mention all of the other skills and habits that you want to keep in mind, such as how to keep your brush from being contaminated and not touching the canvas where you're not supposed to. So you have to watch your hand position because you don't want to accidentally, you know, um, get your fingers in the paint and then smudge something that would not be good. So yeah. Oh, another reason why the white rabbit's harder is the gradients. For some reason, the gradients Maybe it's because the contrast between the values, between the shadow and the light is larger. I think it feels like it, at least to me, for the white rabbit. So trying to get those gradients correct is more of a pain <laughs> than with the dark rabbit. I, I finished that black rabbit within uh, maybe an hour or so, and the white rabbit probably took twice as long. Everything is sped up in this video, of course, but um, yeah. And then trying to do the... The highlights and reflections on the white rabbit are a little is a little trickier because you don't have a color lighter than extreme light so the only way to make um, light places pop out in the white rabbit is to darken the area around the light so mm, i wonder if this is kind of similar to what they talk about when they say vacant shadows technique anyways so yeah, fixing the ears, that rabbit, the gradients are still not ideal. You can kind of see that there's a, there's a line <laughs> where there shouldn't be. It should be much smoother than that. But you yeah, know, gradients are a work in progress always. I think I'll probably be working on gradients until the day I die, most likely. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah. And then after finishing the rabbits, I still have to paint in the tabletop and then do the transition between the tabletop and the background but there you go two rabbits hope you enjoyed that remember to be creative and have a wonderful day i'll see you guys next time <laughs>